All right, so I have been using the new Lady Gaga's House Labs foundation and powder for a month now, and I have been trying it all different kinds of ways, all different techniques and things like that, and I have narrowed down, I think, the perfect technique for the foundation and for the powder, and I wanna talk about all of that today. So I'm gonna be showing you in this video how I like to apply it, my review of this product. I'm gonna talk pros and cons because, listen, this is a pricey foundation and powder, okay? The foundation sits at about $45, and the powder's around $38, and I don't want you to waste your money on something that maybe doesn't work for you or the finish you don't like. So we're gonna be talking pros. We're gonna be talking cons because there is a list of both of them. Without further ado, let's jump into this video, okay? Boop. For this review, let's start out with the foundation, okay? So like I said, it's $45. You get a standard one ounce size. The bottle and the packaging are very luxurious. So this is definitely a more high-end feeling than House Lab's original branding, which was at Amazon. This, this feels so much better, honestly. So you're getting a higher-end feel definitely with this packaging. It has a pump top, which is really good because when I first saw these sneak peeks, I thought it was a poor bottle, but no, 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 no. Pump top, and I have to say, okay, and maybe it's because Samantha Ravindall went on that big spiel about pumps with her Auric Glow Lust, but this pump is amazing just like that. You can really control how much you pump out, and I really love that because some bottles that are really flimsy, you just, you over pour. This, you can just lightly press and just get a little bit of product out, which is nice because this foundation tends to be pretty buildable, so sometimes you just need a little bit more. I picked up the shade 110 light neutral, which is a pretty close match to me I typically tend to be a light neutral, but there are a few different light neutral shades to choose from I could probably balance between this one and maybe one of the deeper ones depending on the time of year This shade it is maybe like a smidge too light for me But I get it to work with my bronzers and everything and it is fine It says it has a natural finish, but for me it is intensely glowy not shimmery There's no shimmer to be had, but I don't know if it just really enhances my natural do I mean, I'm not an oily skin person at all. I do actually have dry skin. It just looks so beautifully glowy on my skin that I love the finish of it, but I've heard a couple people say it's natural finish on them. For me, it's very dewy on me. I did like a quick like reel or shorts or whatever to show how it looked on my skin. Listen, the lighting does not play well with glowy products, but in natural lighting, it looks absolutely beautiful and my skin looks really healthy. Something that I noticed when I was testing this foundation out this month is it really matters what base primer you use when you apply this foundation. So be warned of that, but you might have some in your arsenal that you can pair with this because it is a silicone based foundation. Obviously that's gonna pair best with silicone based primers, but not just silicone based primers. It does the best with a pore filling silicone based primer. Now my favorite pairing has been actually applying the Keys Let Me Glow Illuminating Serum because that really keeps the glowiness of the foundation intact. And then I go in with my Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. Now I just have a travel size of this and it lasts forever. So you can get that if you really want to. But honestly, all my other smoothing primers and pore filling primers worked, worked really well with this foundation as well. The Tarte one just did the best. So you don't have to get these particular ones to get it to work. And listen, I'm a proponent of not having to buy extra things to get a $45 foundation work. But if you're struggling and you want to get this to work, maybe you like the finish or something, but the longevity is just not there, try this pairing if you'd like. Maybe you can skip the keys, whatever you want to do. But that Tarte one is working the best. And that's another thing. Thing. If you have oily skin, you might need to prime it with some other products that are different. I do have dry skin, so I do want to mention that. Now let's go on with the foundation. So obviously two different techniques. One side, I'm going to be using a brush to show you guys what that looks like. Everything blends beautifully. It goes on no problem with a brush and spreads out and everything that I need it to do. I can build it up to an almost full coverage. It's like a medium plus if you want to say that because I do see some a little bit of redness still peeking through and some of my freckles are still peeking through which I don't mind but I do have a little bit of discoloration that also still comes through a little tiny bit but it looks really healthy on the skin in person and I think it looks nice. Luckily it also pairs really nicely with a sponge. So basically depending on the tool that you like to use it should work perfectly fine. The sponge is really beautiful. It really looks more like my skin when I use it with a sponge. I I tend to want the most coverage possible, so I always go with the brush, but if you want to do a more medium coverage, go with the sponge. It looks really pretty and it looks more skin-like. So as you can see, it is more of a true medium coverage with a little bit of buildableness when you use a brush. So depending on the level of coverage that you like, that is a true claim. Now, something that was interesting, yesterday I threw it on with my fingertips just for funsies, just to see if I could make it work, and it actually does look pretty nice. I didn't have a video, sorry, but I just wanted to see if if it like looked weird in my pores. I didn't use a primer or anything that day. I just spread it on really quickly over my sunscreen and it looks really pretty. It just gave a little bit of a, 
like a tinted moisturizer, but a little bit more than that, like a light coverage. I don't love the feeling of spreading it on with my finger, so I personally won't do it again, but it is there as an option if you don't wanna have a lot of foundations in your arsenal. It was just nice to know that this could work in a pinch to just pat it on really quickly, spread it out. Now concealers, you shouldn't have to use a separate concealer to get this foundation to work either, but if you wanna keep that medium coverage with that glow, I found the Milk Makeup Concealer, the newer one called Future Fluid. That concealer is pairing so beautifully with this foundation because you don't have like a shelf of say a matte concealer and then a glowy foundation. It works really seamless together, but I have used my other concealers and it works fine too. Like the Hard Candy Glamouflage Concealer, that one's like five bucks. That works nice. It's not glowy at all, but it's pairing really well with other products. So let's talk powder. Obviously, like I said, $38 for that. And it does come in five different shades. I just have the translucent shade since I am a light neutral skin tone. I have a confession to make. I don't return a lot of products that I try because I'm reviewing them. I need them for different things. But when a product makes me super mad and especially when I spend a lot of money on it, I will sometimes return it when I'm just like, ah! So I almost, I almost returned this powder because I kind of felt a little bit duped with this powder, okay? I was watching somebody on TikTok talk about it when it first launched and they were talking about how hydrating it felt, how smoothing, yada, yada, their pores blurred away to nothing. And I was like, sold, I need that. I have dry skin, I need a good powder that can actually hydrate my skin. I want it. So back last month, if you watch my vlogs, you saw me like try it and I'm like, it just feels dry, it doesn't feel smoothing, I don't want it. And then I actually went back the next week, tried it again and I was like, oh yeah, I do actually want it. It does feel smoothing now for some reason, let me try it. So I got it and I hated it, okay? It was not working well with a brush because I'm gonna tell you why I kept it, okay? With a brush, it amplified my pores. And that wasn't only with this foundation. With this foundation, it made it look Blech. And with other foundations too, no matter what I was doing when I was using a brush, it was looking so bad. Then I remembered, oh my goodness, why have I not tried it yet with, where is it? My Tati Blendiful, which is just like a powder puff. I think e.l.f. has one now too, so I need to get some more of these because this thing has seen better days. But pressing this into the skin, oh my gosh, it completely changed the powder for me and the way it applies. I'm actually in love with this powder now, mostly. I have a couple caveats. I love how it looks on my skin. It did reduce the way my pore size looked. My pores finally look a little bit smaller, especially compared to how it was with a brush. I don't know if building it in with a brush was just like lifting the product and pushing it into like, it was just, it was just weird. But pressing it in with the powder puff is really, really making a difference. It looks so beautiful. It's not illuminating in a way. It doesn't have any shimmer or anything, but it does make my skin look more hydrated than some other high-end powders. Now, if I were to pick between different high-end powders right now, I actually would pick this over, say, the Hourglass Veil Powder or even the Milk Makeup Powder. I think that this one looks better on my dry skin than those do. It's not mattifying at all, so you're not going to be getting that in this. If you have oily skin and oil tends to break through throughout the day, you might want to skip this one because it might not be the one that you're looking for. I would say go with the Hourglass if you're looking for that. But the closest drugstore one I could compare it to, which is actually what I was hoping for, is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. It is most similar to this. Honestly, I did a side-by-side -side comparison. I couldn't really tell a difference between the two, so I can't tell you, like, you have to spend $35, $38 on this one versus the $10 on this one. This one does just as beautiful of a job. This one might be a smidge more highlight hydrating looking like a smidge and this one you can use a brush with don't use a brush with this powder let me know if you have used this powder with a brush and if it worked for you because gosh holy moly my skin has never looked so bad with a powder before and well that's probably not true that's a bit dramatic but my pores have never looked so bad with a powder so now i do love it but i have some caveats so let's talk pros and cons for both of these let's jump back over to the foundation because that one's first let's talk about the pros i have a little list right here because i've been thinking about it for a couple weeks right so the pros for me for anybody looking for this it, it would be a pro and that is that it is glowy okay it gives that shine it is beautiful there are no micro glitters or anything that i can detect so it's not giving a shimmery glow it's not making me look like a tin man it's a very healthy beautiful glow if you're familiar with the it cosmetics nude glow cc cream it's kind of similar to that one this one is just giving more coverage i would say 
maybe a little tiny less glow than that one because that nude glow is pretty darn glowy. So a little less glow, it just looks so healthy on my skin. It's really nice. And that's another thing, in person, if you're feeling like it's too glowy right now on my skin, I look oily, it's kind of picking up some fine lines and some wrinkles or whatever. In person, it doesn't, okay? My lighting is gonna be a different thing. When I'm wearing glowy products with this lighting, it it's a lot. It looks a little bit textured, it looks a little bit much, and that's kind of the nature of some glowy products. But in person, my skin looks so healthy, so evened out, really nice, really beautiful. So if you're thinking about doing this for say a wedding day with photos or a special event that lots of pictures can be taken, I don't know if I could recommend it for that. I prefer a little bit more matte product for things like special events and photography, but for an everyday wear for medium to almost full coverage, it is a beautiful, healthy looking foundation, especially for those with dry skin. Another pro I would say is that I really like that it has flexible coverage. So you can, like I said, throw it on with your fingers really quickly if you're in a pinch, but it also works beautifully with the different tools that I talked about. So a brush or a sponge, and you can build up the amount of coverage that you want. You can actually go in with a lighter hand, a lighter amount when you use a sponge and get a more light to medium coverage. Another pro is it is pairing beautifully with everything else that I pair it with. So different concealers, different cream blushes, bronzers, what else? Different powders even, because obviously I hated this one for a second. So I had to pair it with some other powders and it's going beautifully with that. So you do not have to have this combo to get it to work. I think the primer is probably the part that makes the most difference when using this foundation. But let's talk about cons because there is a con here for some people is I feel you have to set this foundation. It remains very almost greasy feeling because it is so glowy and hydrating, it does not dry down. I tried it, does not work, wouldn't recommend, unless you like that feeling on your skin, I don't like it. Usually some foundations will eventually dry down. This one just really didn't. So you do need to set it with some sort of powder or some kind of heavy duty spray maybe. And then another con of course is it's not camera friendly, event friendly if lots of pictures gonna be taken. So I wouldn't recommend it for that. In my opinion, I feel like a major con is this is not for oily skin unless you really, really like that glow and you bring some blotting papers on hand or some pressed powder to help even out the shine because my skin will look progressively shiny throughout the day, progressively glowy. I don't go full sweat looking. I don't look like I'm dripping by the end of the day, but it does get glowier and glowier and more hydrated looking. And I know some people do not want that. So I would say that's a con for some, depending on what you're looking for. And with that said, <laughs> on a hot, humid day, which we have had here down in SoCal. We are not usually in the 90s with 100% of humidity, but we had some weeks in this last month that we were. And this is not a foundation that felt comfortable on my skin on those days. So that's another thing is I wouldn't get really oily, but I would just kind of feel it on those hot, humid days. So bear that in mind when you get this foundation or you're thinking about picking this one up. Feel like it's gonna be the perfect foundation for the colder, drier winter months or the colder, drier climates. Another con I would say is I really didn't love how this foundation looked with other primers that weren't pore filling. I think that you really need that pore filling smoothing primer. I know some people don't believe in primers. So if you don't, this might not be for you. Whenever I paired it with a different primer, it just really enhanced my pores and my skin texture. And I think that goes to the glow factor of this product and those ingredients that they're using to keep your skin glowing. Sometimes that just amplifies texture. And by using a pore filling primer or a smoothing primer, it helps to create a smoother base, you know? But that's not the case with all foundations. Some foundations do it just fine with whatever found primer you pair it with. That would be a con of this one is you really need to pair it with the proper primer. Alliteration. Cons could be the price for some. I feel like the value is there, so it's okay for me. I definitely feel like my skin look, looks healthy. It is a very fancy packaging, so to me the price is justified and it's on par with other high-end foundations, but I know it can be a con for some, obviously. Let's talk powder pros and cons, okay? Pros. It minimizes the look of pores if you use a pressed puff, a powder puff. If you don't use a powder puff, that ain't happening, okay? And But it is amazing. It is crazy how much of a difference the powder puff makes in pressing the powder in. My pores actually did disappear. It was nuts. So that is a pro when used properly. What else do I have here? Doesn't make my skin too matte or dry looking. Again, being dry skin, I'm always on the hunt for powders that don't make my skin look like a dry desert, okay? I want like how my skin looks with the foundation, 
but not sticky or weird or gross feeling, you know? I don't wanna, I don't wanna feel the foundation. I don't wanna bump my face and have it come off on something. I want something to set my foundation, but not take away the beautiful glow of it. And this powder is doing that for me. I think my skin does not look powdery whatsoever. It looks really beautiful and I'm really enjoying that. Another pro is it pairs well with other foundations. So this is not exclusive to using it with the House Labs foundation. So if you just want one of these, that is fine. You do not need to use both to get these to work. This powder foundation I threw on top of the Patrick Star one size foundation yesterday and it looked so nice. It's really just helping add that bit of hydration that my dry skin needs. I'm really enjoying it. Of course, the last pro I'm gonna mention is it helps my foundation to last longer, not longer compared to some say matte foundations. Those are gonna help my foundation stay the hardest and the longest, but my skin might not look the best. This is helping obviously create a longer longevity than say not setting it and some other powders. This one just helps my skin to my makeup to last longer without looking dry. Let's talk cons though. Well, we talked about minimizing the look of pores when you use a powder puff, but what does it do when you use a brush? It maximizes the look of pores. Do not use it with a brush. I can't stress that enough. Like I said, unless it worked for you, then I would love to know how and why it worked for you. But powder puff is the way to go, which is a bummer because that means if you don't have one of these, you would have to pick up another product to get this to work. I think that that kind of sucks when that happens. The price, you know, $35 for this one when my e.l.f. one for $10 pretty much works exactly the same. So that's nice. You have a dupe already to try out. Try the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder if you're interested in this one because maybe one day you want to upgrade to this one if you're using that one or whatever. I'm glad to have both in my arsenal. The major con of this product that makes me think I probably won't repurchase it unless I really, really go falling in love with it like fully, truly by time I'm out. But I really don't like the packaging of this because I have to use a powder puff. Although maybe I probably wouldn't like it if I would use a brush either. It has, like I get the concept of it and I understand why they did it this way. It has this stopper in there so your powder is not a mess. And then it also has the net. I think they could do without the stopper because sometimes I wanna, you know, tap it in and it makes it like super impossible to get my like thing in there to get. So I don't like it. I have to constantly go back in and press it because it doesn't like pick up enough stuff. I mean, it picks up some, but it's just, it's just not enough and then I have to sometimes I get too much and I have to tap off the excess and then I go in and I press it but it's just an annoying packaging like on the inside on the outside it feels luxe on the inside it's frustrating I probably would have preferred what elf does where they have like the little twisty thing that you can twist that way you can dispense exactly how much you want because the net it's just driving me nuts I think I can pull it off which is what I might eventually do I know it's I'll probably waste more product that way, but it won't drive me crazy having a constant re constantly redip, but it only dispenses like a little bit. So that's why I have to do that. Okay, so those are my pros and cons. And overall to sum up, I think that if you have dry skin, this foundation and or this powder, you might really like if you like a little bit of a glowy, healthy look to your skin. If you like matte or you need matte or you have oily skin, I would reconsider if you want to get this powder or this foundation, because it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. And it also doesn't wear the longest depending on what you pair it with. So if you're in that hot, humid climate, be warned, it may not be for you. Like I said, on days that it was hot and humid, I did not want to use it. I use it a couple times and then I'm like, okay, not, not on those days. It's just too much. You know when you can feel like you're sweating and it's almost like not getting released? <laughs> that's the feeling. But that's pretty much it for today. Subscribe before you go so you don't miss out on my future videos and I will see you guys next time. Okay, bye.